Welcome to Shorty Super Coach, and we're going to take a look at how it all panned out over the weekend in week two of the Marsh Community Series. Wasn't as many games this weekend, but uh, still a little bit to talk about. Um, I wanted to give a little shout out to James, who said good day to me at the uh, Big V versus All Star game on the Friday, so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I was just strolling to line up and get in, and uh, yeah, he spotted me out, and we had a bit of a chat, so yeah, cheers, mate. Um, yeah, I always appreciate when people say g'day, and it's it's always good to yeah talk a bit of super coach and, and actually meet a few of the people that watch the channel. So yeah, thanks heaps for that, mate, and um, hopefully you keep watching. But uh, I wanted to first take us to West Coast and the Bombers, and uh, there were a few interesting ones here. I think uh, Tim Kelly, certainly a bit of interest about him, and 27 touches, 14 contested, 6 clearances, 100 super coach points. It was Pretty much a Tim Kelly sort of game. Like, he always has some pretty big numbers. Um, so I think most people would have been pretty pleased. If you were looking at him, you would have been like, yeah, okay, I think he's certainly well in consideration. I'm still not fully on board. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to get to 110 average. I don't think he can quite get there. But, and I think at that price, that's probably what you need from him. But, uh, look, he certainly had some good numbers on Thursday night, and Nick Nat, also very Nick Nat style on numbers, low time on ground percentage, and pretty solid numbers for the amount of minutes that he did play, 58 super coach points from about half a game, and 28 hit outs, you know, had a fair bit to do with that, and he's a really interesting one, and, and the question has nothing to do with his scoring ability, I think points per minute, he's as good as they come, he's such an impactful sort of guy, but it is whether he can get through games well enough, like week in, week out, backing up and not being rested or not breaking down. He's at a pretty awkward price, but I guess you can rest easy in the fact that if he is out there, he's going to score well. There's no doubt about that. But probably the question is, he could be a nightmare if he goes down round three or four, or not even goes down. You know, the Eagles might just say, oh, look, Nick, you copped a bit of a knock. You didn't pull up as well as we'd like they're actually going to take no risks with him. So that leaves the door slightly open at any point in the season for him to just cop a little rest. So, And that can really hurt you in the ruck division too. But um, certainly showed that he's still got that scoring ability. <clears throat> Over at the Bombers, Devin Smith was the one that many people had an eye on, myself included, and he was okay. Um, I think the overall package was 20 touches, 87 super coach points. But it was really two different halves. The first half, he was real quiet. I didn't watch the game live. I just listened to bits and pieces. But just the 23 super coach points in the first half, one centre bounce attended. And clearly there was a shift in his position, seemingly, unless he was just quiet first up. People who watched it would be able to tell me a bit better. But it did look like he was thrown in the midfield hardcore because six centre bounce attendances in the second half and 66 super coach points or something along those lines. They were the stats I read. Um, so clearly a big second half. And just good that he got through the game too because he's had a lot of trouble with his body. So I think people would have been pleased with that. So he just gives us something to think about. I'm going to go to the Geelong Essendon game in Colac next week or coming up and I'll be real interested to see how lots of cats go. But I'll have a very close eye on Devin Smith as well. Um, Irving Mosquito as well, he he just kept getting talked about. Everyone seemed to be wanting to talk about how electrifying he was and creative. He's won 23K. Historically, a bloke like him in that sort of position isn't going to score consistently. But if he plays, you know, he'll be in that mix where we think about selecting him as a rookie. Um, probably two guys that I'd say you'd more look at your draft. I mean, Darcy Parrish is available as a forward, 29 touches, 115 super coach from 65% time on ground. I've been a bit of a rap for him all pre-season, but it'd be pretty risky and pretty gutsy. And Andy McGrath, he looks like he's about to transition into a midfielder and be an absolute gun. I'm a big fan of him, as many of you would know. Of course, he's just a mid only now, so we're not going to pick him, but 24 touches, 94 super coach. Just keep it under your hat for your draft side, I think. And then as we move on to the Giants and Sydney... Um, and the Giants just smacked them. 
absolutely smashed them. And there were a couple of young giants that really gave us something to think about. Uh, Tom Green, 166K in our midfield, 21 touches, 15 contested. He's a big fella too, you know, first year player, but he's like 188 centimetres, 85 kegs. You know, he's built pretty well, ready to go. And, uh, yeah, 15 of those touches were contested. So I think a lot of people, be uh, myself included, sort of shuffling things around to see if they can get him in. I mean, he got a bit more opportunity because, you know, Cal Ward's obviously out. Taranto went down with a shoulder injury. Josh Kelly and Cornelio, they were playing in the, um, you know, the charity game for the bushfires. So we've got to take that into consideration. And Jackson Haitley's another bloke who got opportunity and benefited from it. 25 touches, 129 super coach. He was really good. Um, obviously, those guys aren't going to get that same exposure when the superstars come back. So, And Whitfield's another one that I left off there. So, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, it's just something to think about, that these numbers, while they're really impressive and should help them debut in round one, um, or at least get a game round one for some of those guys, don't expect these exact numbers to be replicated because they just won't get the same amount of opportunity around the ball, but still promising signs. Lockie Ash, defender midfielder. Obviously, he was picked four last year in the draft. Um, 88 super coach. He's 198k defender midfield, as I mentioned. So, again, he looked pretty solid and it'll give people something to think about. Big Sam Jacobs. Now, 11 touches, 23 hitouts, 66 super coach points. Copped a knee from Naismith in the ruck contest in the third quarter and just left the ground. So it looked like it was just precaution. You know, Big Sauce copped a knock and went, look, mate, I've been doing this for years. I'm not going back out. Just let, just let me chill out. I've copped a knee to the head. Just let me sit out the last half of here, mate. And, and that's what he did. It didn't look like there was anything too much to be concerned about. And in terms of his actual return, he was going all right and, the question for what what is he? He's priced around. I'm going off the top of my head, three forty, fifty. It's something around that mark. It's pretty awkward, but I do think he's going to give you solid numbers. You know, he, he's going to average solid. I'm not a fan of him. I'm not selecting him. I think he's in the twilight of his career. I think his best days are well past him. I can only really see a best case scenario of somewhere in the high eighties. Best case, maybe that's good enough for you. I'll let you make that decision, but. And we've still got the question mark of whether he's going to ruck solo as well. And that could probably be the defining decision too. If he's sharing it with Mumford, then no way. We've, he's got to be a solo ruck for us to select him. But, um, you know, he was serviceable. He was pretty solid. Over at the Swans, Jordan Dawson. Now, he's priced at 467k, defender forward, 19 touches, playing off a half-back line, but also seven tackles, 125 super coach. And... Look, he's really got to be in the conversation now. I hadn't seen stacks of him and was interested to see what he was about, where he would line up, get a really good look at him. And, you know, he was impressive. I think he's going to be a player that really pushes his case to take that next step and be a premium. And I know there are a few people strongly thinking about him. So that performance on the weekend in what was a pretty tough day at the office was for the Swans. It's got to make you go, yeah, could be a chance. I mean, again, we've got to equate all sorts of things like players, you know, playing in the uh, Big V or the All-Stars. You know, we've got to take that into consideration as who was actually missing and how it could possibly affect that player if the other guy was in. But still, Dawson's shown it at AFL level in portions and had a, a good rise in his numbers last year. But a lot of people will be hoping that he can take just another little step up. And Sam Naismith, oh, I mentioned him just copping the knee to Sauce's head, but he also put forward a bit of a case. 251k, 28 hit outs, 79 super coach points from about half the game, I think it was, from memory. So that's pretty big stuff. I mean, historically, he doesn't score well, but he's missed a lot of footy. He hasn't played for a couple of years. You know, the option for him to be the number one standalone rock ruck at the Swans is definitely a good chance. So some people would be considering him, really cheap sort of option. And again, you would expect him to be a reliable option, but nothing too fancy. I think he's just going to be solid. I wouldn't be endorsing him, but look, his performance by the numbers read reasonably well. 
And then a couple of young guys, Dill Stevens, 13 touches, 38 super coach points, and Will Gould, 10 touches, 68 super coach points, and absolutely flattened Matty DeBoer. <laughs> Gee, I'll tell you what, if uh, maybe maybe Gouldy's a super coacher and just thought, I'm getting rid of this tagger. This bloke is destroying some of my captain options, and he just flattened him. It was pretty impressive from a from a young bloke, just thought, yeah, I'm going to stamp myself here, and Ooh, it was a good bump, but um, anyway, both those guys put forward a solid case and would have to be in the mix, but would also probably need a decent second up match in the uh, Marsh Community Series just to cement that. Fremantle Carlton, I didn't see this game, so I'm just purely going off the numbers, but Luke Ryan does what he does, 20 kicks, 6 handballs, classic sort of Ryan game, 113 super coach points, so give people a bit of confidence that he can back up last year's performance. Andy Brayshaw, now he's probably one that a lot of people were taking a look at and would have been pleased with what they saw. 19 touches, 94 super coach points, 7 tackles. He's in and under hard nut. And that was from 60% of the time, or of the game, I should say. Um, look, I've been a big fan of him. I've mentioned him in a lot of those discussions about F3 and a breakout contender, and this sort of pushed that case pretty well. It, it's hard to judge super well without watching the game, but it looks like he was playing on the ball inside mid. The numbers read well, and he didn't even have a full game. So that's got to warm the hearts of a lot of people that are looking at picking Brayshaw. So keep him on a nice little watch. A few younger players, Caleb Sarong, 175k in our midfields. He, uh, he scored 60 supercoach points, had the 14 touches, 11 contested. So, again, another high pick from last year, 56% time on ground. He certainly looked as if he showed that he was far from out of place at that level and, you know, looked like he's got a really good inside game. Sam Sturt and uh, Monaro Frederick, I'm just guessing at that one. I oh, I hope I pronounced it right, but they didn't do too much, to be honest. They're a couple of guys that we've spoken about potentially being cash cows for us, but they'd have to do a bit more second up if they get the opportunity, I'd say, to earn a round one berth. Over at the Blues, Sammy Walsh. Now, this is one that James was asking me about on Friday night, and look, he, he played really well. 28 touches, I think it was about 100 super coach points, and he's just a star, let's be honest. I mean, I'm not going to endorse his selection too hard here because I think he's awkwardly priced um, and you'd probably need him to average 110, which would be a massive ask. But he just seems to keep ticking the boxes. No matter where he goes, no matter what level, no matter what the expectation, he just continues to tick the box when he's asked to step up to the plate. So, you know, obviously that was without Crips and, um, you know, but again, it was like, hey, Sammy, step up to the plate. There's no Pat here. And he did. I think he's just going to, I think his numbers will go up again. I don't think it'll be enough for us to pick him because of that sort of price. You really need him to be a keeper. But um, there seems to be a bit of interest in him. Sam Doherty was the real takeaway from this one and, and a really interesting selection. And I'm not exactly sure how to read it. From what I can gather, he was taking quite a few kick-ins. Just the 17 touches. Um, I think it was 17, if I can read my writing. 69 super coach points. So he didn't set the world on fire. But he got through the game fit and healthy, playing that similar role. The only concern I would have is that Cade Simpson is still kicking around and Nick Newman has stepped up to the plate also. So I just wonder, I feel as if he needs a good second game here for us to have a bit of confidence in him. He was named in the best players for Carlton, so he obviously played well. He just didn't translate to an unbelievable score, but I think... Let's not pull the trigger on him. I've been reading a few things. People are a bit concerned. I think let's just wait to see what he does second up because um, we know what he's capable of. And Jack Martin had the nine touches, 75 super coach from 45% time on ground. Now, that reads really well, but from what I, I was just listening to the radio and there was actually a little bit of criticism about him, you know, sort of maybe he's not fit enough for the midfield because it does seem as if he's going to be more of a forward than a mid but with a relatively even spread and balance. But, look, that was a pretty good score in terms of just pure numbers-based. People who watch the game might be able to tell me a bit better, you know, onto how impressive he was. 
Uh, Mark Pittnett, 10 touches, had the 19 hit outs, 45 super coach, 40% time on ground. He's 236k. Just thought I'd you know, throw it out there because he's a cheap ruck, but look, Cruz is going to be the main man for the Blues, so I just thought I'd throw him in there in case anyone saw those numbers and thought, oh, hello, 236, worth a thought. But I don't think so. Um, Tom Williamson, 52 um, super coach points, played the majority of the game, had the 12 touches, serviceable from what I can read, but you know he, he impressed in that practice game they had the other day. I think it was against Collingwood, so... I still reckon he's a really good chance. Just one for your draft as well. Paddy Dow, big fan. He just doesn't get a lot of outside ball, but 15 touches and five clearances. I think he's ready to step up. Don't be surprised to see a really good rise in his numbers. I think he's about 200 and something K, maybe close to 300 now that I think about it. I want to say 297, but just keep him in mind because he's an inside mid, not the best year last year didn't use the ball that well but just keep him in mind uh, Richmond and Collingwood there wasn't a stack here because you know quite a few of the players were representing in the all-star and the big V but uh, particularly for the Tigers you know it, was, it wasn't too much to write home about but Marlon Pickett you know he had 14 touches 61 super coach points gave away four free kicks which didn't do his didn't do his scoring any favors but I think he's just locked and loaded he uh He's just you know one twenty three k, and we all, we all know the story, so it's hard to argue. Um, Riley Collier Dawkins nine touches, thirty super coach points from fifty five percent time on ground. I feel as if maybe he would have wanted to do a little bit more, given the opportunity, but he does do some really nice things, and and the hype is pretty big around this young man, so he's got to be a chance to find his way into the team at some stage throughout the year. Whether that's round one, we'll have to wait and see, but. You know, he's a big-bodied, young mid, so there's a fair bit of positive talk coming out of him from the Tigers. And Crisp over at the Pies only played 63% of the game, but 28 touches, 118 super coach points. He's like a point-of-difference defender premium, I'd say. I wouldn't start him. I Just not my thing. Um, but I do know there's some Crisp fans out there, so he certainly showed that he, he plays that role really, really well. Um, Darcy Cameron, interesting one, had the had the twelve touches, twenty hitouts, a couple of goals, one twenty seven super coach. Um, but we've obviously we've got to take into account that no Grundy meant that he shouldered the load, and you know change of club for him. He's cheap. He got the opportunity in the practice game, and he would have loved it to just shoulder the majority of the load and really show the Collingwood people what he can do. But he's not going to get that opportunity in the real season. He might be able to find his way into the team and do a little bit of rucking. I'm not sure what his forward craft's like, but he kicked a couple of goals. So maybe he's a good chance to debut, but let's not get carried away with the score. He's not going to score anything like that, but he could be something for our bench position in the ruck department. Um, and Adam Trelaw did the hammy. Sounds like it's not too bad, but he certainly, you know, for a bloke who's had troubles in that department, you know, he was just doing what he does. Had 30-something touches, you know, already. Did it late in the game, but... He'd have to be in doubt for round one, I'd say. But there are, you know, he's he's sort of like a guy that not too many people are picking, but he is in some teams, and he would be a point of difference premium if he does play. But that has got to put his round one hopes just under a reasonable amount of doubt. I'm not exactly sure on how bad it is, but we'll probably find out soon enough. And a couple of young blokes to round it out. Jay Rantel had the nine touches, 34 super coach. And Trent Bianco, not as much influence. Four touches, 14 super coach points. But those two blokes played less than a quarter of the game. So they didn't get a stack of opportunity. But at least uh, by the numbers, Rantel looked like he had the better um, case of the two. I listened to the first two or so quarters of this as I struggled uh, with a hangover in bed. But, um, you know, it looked as if they didn't get a stack of opportunity. But still... Hopefully they'll be better for the run, and there are a couple of guys that are, you know, definitely Bianco is definitely on our radar, so something to keep in mind. But um, yeah, that that winds it up, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I I do thoroughly enjoy going through the numbers. I really like this time of year when we actually get, you know, some numbers and some actual vision about what these guys that we've been talking about for ages can actually do. So it, there's always a bit of shuffling with the side. I've been doing a bit of thinking myself. 
I'll have a video at some stage throughout the week with a bit of an update on my team. But at this point in time, let's not go crazy, but certainly a few things to think about. So I'll be back with a few videos pretty soon. I'm just about to duck in and watch, uh, I think the Kiwis are in now in the women's T20. I tried to knock this one out in the break, but obviously we've ticked into about the 20-minute mark, so I'll probably miss the first few overs, but hopefully the Aussie girls can get the job done there. But um, I'll be back with a bit more Supercoach content real soon. Cheers.